Mikola could not sleep all night. Thoughts raged in his head and did not give rest. Who stole the can and the pump? Where to look for a new clearing to hide the still? How to get even more oil to refine and sell to Gzegos before the bridge in the port are completed? And most importantly, where is the best place to get the oil now? The forest pipe is empty. Someone noticed the pipe on the field, and old Kuzma's orchard is no go. He is probably suspecting something and won't buy it the second time. All these questions remained unanswered. But there was another unanswered question that did not give Mikola peace. What would he have to face when his wife found out that he hadn't gone to the bee yard? And in all earnestness, Mikola didn't really want to get an answer to this question, because he already knew it. To avoid quarrelling with his wife, Mikola decided to quietly go to the bee yard before she woke up. Mikola, however, wouldn't make a good spy. He was too... Mikola! The menacing voice did not bode well. Where have you been? You won't believe it. Mikola was not taken aback. I got lost. I told you that I didn't remember the way. Oh, nonsense! The wife clearly did not believe him. And where is the barrel? Well, he had to make it up on the go. I got tired of carrying it, so I left it there. All right, the wife said firmly. This time I'll go with you so that you don't get lost. Wait, Mikola said quickly. Let me go to the fair. I'll buy a wheel for the cart and we'll ride it to the bee yard with barrels. Very well, the wife agreed. But be quick about it. We should get the honey before it goes bad. All right, Mikola said with relief. I'll be right back. Mikola goes to the fair thinking, Hey, scatterbrain, I didn't move the still. I hope it's still there when I'm back from the fair.
While Mikola was thinking about the still, he noticed that the man walking towards him was his dear friend Serunia. Serunia, I haven't seen you in ages. How are you? How's her missus? Mikola, my man, how glad I am to see you. He clearly did not hide his pleasure of meeting an old friend. I'm fine, and my wife is all right, and how are you? I'm all right too, replied Mikola. And Sirunia, what are you doing here? And dress smartly, I see. I, are you heading to a party? Oh, I have no time for your jokes now, Mikola. Sirunia suddenly turned sullen and added in a disturbed voice, No time for jokes at all. Looks like you don't know anything yet. What am I supposed to know? inquired Mikola cautiously. Oh, oh, Giza, replied Sirunia sadly. Oh, our friend, he's gone. Afanasi? asked Mikola worriedly. Gone? How? Gone when? Gone where? Well, you see, Sirunia explained thoughtfully, there is a story. He was visiting me the other day, and my wife treated him to some foreign dish. I don't even remember what it's called. And so uh, he liked this dish so much that he asked my wife for the recipe so he could cook it himself. You know, Afanasi is a gourmet. Yeah, Afanasi loves to eat, grinned Mikola. So, Sarunia continued, to cook it, you need pickled beets. But in our village, you know, nobody makes it. So Giza went looking for it, and nobody had seen him since. I told him to just use cucumbers instead of beets, but he refused to even listen. He was just talking about the beets all the time, like, uh, like a madman. By golly, Mikola said sympathetically. Well, I hope he's all right. Mikola, Sirunia said hopefully, can you help me find him, eh? What if he got into trouble? Oh, no, Sirunia, I'm sorry, I can't. Feeling guilty, Mikola began to make excuses. My wife is going to kill me. I have been promising her to go to the honey yard, but I never went, and the honey is going bad. What kind of friend are you? Sirunia snapped with contempt. You leave your buddy in trouble, but care about some bees and honey. Ah, uh, you're right, Sirunia, said Mikola, confidently, being ashamed of himself. Our friend might be in trouble. We must rescue him. Come on, to heck with this bee yard. Now we're talking, Sirunia smiled joyfully. I knew that you would not leave your friend in deep water. So how about some moonshine before we go, eh? For courage. Well, if it's just a little, Mikola said, cheering up. And if it's just for courage, haha. <laughs>
Serunia? Mikola asked in surprise. Why are you constantly doing some kind of strange rite? Is it magic or are you not feeling well? Oh, that, replied Serunia in frustration. I'm pulling up my underpants. They droop all the time. Ah, I see. I thought it was some kind of a uh, magic trick. Are you using a rope to hold them up? Mikola asked in surprise. Are uh, elastic bands out of fashion now? Well, uh, you see, uh, the thing is, Sarunia hesitated, I lost the band. Eh, it was such a good band, I, I was so fond of it. Military grade, made at an army factory. You could launch satellites into space with such an elastic. You know, I could put a whole bottle of moonshine in my underpants and go dancing, knowing that the bottle is perfectly safe. The band was that good. Oh, bother. Oh, by the way, I happen to have an extra elastic band, said Mikola, taking the band out of his pocket. Here you go. Wow. It's almost like mine, Serunia rejoiced. Thank you, friend. You don't say, Nicola was surprised. Then realize something. I think I know where you lost your band. Did you come to the clearing behind my barn with some shady guy? What are you saying, Nicola? Serunia said aggrievedly. We are friends, aren't we? Well, all right then, said Nicola. Let's be on our way. Wait a sec, Mikola. Serunia stopped him. I need to test the band. How are you going to do it? Mikola said surprised. You'll see, <laughs> replied Serunia confidently. I say, it's as reliable as mine, Serunia said joyfully, breathing heavily after the dance. A great band. Thank you, Mikola, for such a gift. Yeah, you're welcome, Serunia, Mikola replied with a smirk. Well, you really are something. Look at you. All right, let's go. Who's there? Mikola yelled in surprise when he heard some voices in the ravine. There is no one here, replied a startled voice from the darkness. What do you want? Afanasi. Is that you? exclaimed Mikola in surprise. Well, let's say it's me, a voice from the dark replied a little more confidently. And who the heck are you? The one who... Along with Serunia is looking for you, fool, all around the neighborhood, said Mikola angrily. What are you, Mikola? Is that you? Giza was delighted. Well, I've met some friends here. We're having a meal. Well, we're almost done. By George, Mikola said, not hiding his surprise. And what the heck are you eating there in the ravine? Ah, oh, well, Afanasi was taken aback. <laughs> Well, eating sauerkraut, yeah. You really did a number here. Mikola was stupefied to hear a horse neighing. Giza, quit eating whatever it is and come up here. Mikola, Serunia, my dearest friends, Afanasi rejoiced. How glad I am to see you. Your friends? Serunia cut him off wickedly. Are in the ravine, aren't they? Finishing up the sauerkraut. Where the heck have you been, dummy? I checked all the ditches looking for you. I was worried out my mind. Serunia, forgive silly old me, said Afanasi guiltily. I was looking for the beets, but then I uh, met my friends. Well, and then... 
did you manage to buy the beets at last? Sarunia said, inquiring. Yeah, that I did, Afanasi replied joyfully. All right, Mikola interrupted the conversation. Since everyone is alive and well, let's head back. It's getting late already. Yeah, let's go, Afanasi said. But how about a little moonshine? To our meeting! Well, maybe just a little for the meeting, Mikola agreed, not without pleasure. I still have plenty of things to do. Mikola woke up at his homestead in the morning. The head was cracking. He couldn't remember a thing. His vision was blurry. Ah, fella, uh, I'll be, Mikola muttered sullenly. What a weird dream. It looks like we had a drop too much with Sununia and Afanas. Mikola, the wife greeted him petulantly. Where the heck were you? Well, I met an old friend of mine, Sarunia, Mikola muttered indistinctly. He asked me to help find Afanasi, who'd been missing, so I helped him. I can't leave a friend in hot water, can I? I see what you helped him with. Irritation and acrimony were strong in her voice. Exhausted after so much helping, are you? Don't be mad, Mikola began to beg pitifully. These are my friends. I know you're good-for-nothing friends, the wife said. Have you bought the wheel at least? Uh, no, Mikola tried to make his voice tragic. I was rescuing a friend. What do you mean, no? The wife was getting angrier by the minute. How are we supposed to go to the honey yard? The honey will go bad. Calm down, Mikola said, as affectionately as he could manage. I'll go to the fair real quick and buy a wheel. I heard this story yesterday. His spouse was really angry. I promise, Mikola spoke with greater confidence. I'll be back in no time. Oh, all right, the woman agreed, abating a little. Off you go, then, and be quick about it.
Walking to the fair, Nicola was thinking. Yeah, we had a little too much with Serunia and Afanasi yesterday. I even began seeing things.
guy with three cups before him called out fervently. If you can guess where the ball is, hey, I'll give you some money. Hmm. When Macola heard about the money, it piqued his interest. All right, let's try it. Lucky fella. Nobody could guess it before you, the man said with surprise. Here, have a coin. It's promise. Well, thanks, rejoiced Mikola. Can I try again? Sure you can, the man said. Just don't leave me penniless with all that luck of yours. genuine surprise. Wow, man, you're probably some kind of sorcerer. You know some secret winning so easily. Yeah, have another coin. Of course I know a secret, lied Mikola, inebriated by his luck and the sound of the clinking coin. Can I try again? Well, man, where's the fun in it? guy objected. Let's play fair. If you guess it right, I pay you money. And if you don't, you pay me. Then it'll be fair. All right, Nicola agreed, feeling the thrill. So be it. Come on, let's play again. back from the fair, completely crestfallen. What have I done? All the money that I had saved up for the bank. I lost everything. I had to save up just a bit more, and I could have saved the homestead. And now, oh. Upon returning home, Mikola decided not to upset his wife and to hide that he was completely devastated. So he pulled himself together and, as if nothing had happened, began fixing the cartwheel. <laughs> 